Hello, and welcome back to The Goodness Margin, the place where we find margin for the good things in life. Today, I'm gonna to share with you tips for hosting a dinner party. You can use these tips for if you're hosting a baby shower or any sort of party at your home or really anywhere else. These are just tips showing you how that I planned for an event. A few weeks ago, we celebrated my parents' 45th wedding anniversary. We surprised them by hosting a dinner party here at my home with their closest friends. And it was so much fun and it really went off really smoothly. In fact, I was kind of surprised at how low my stress level was. And I realized it was because I had been so diligent with planning ahead. And I shared some of this information on social media and it had so much response that I wanted to be sure to put this on YouTube so you can access this whenever you want. Speaking of YouTube, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell to be notified when the next video goes live. If you have time, you can start planning a month in advance. I recommend planning at least two weeks in advance for an event like this, but you can start a month in advance. There's a few things that you wanna go ahead and gather. You wanna gather your guest list because you need to go ahead and start letting people know. People have busy schedules, and so you want to be sure that you know how many people are going to be there, so let them know in advance. So you want to get your guest list. You also want to be sure that you, of course, have the date and time. This is exactly when we are going to hold this event. And also, you can kind of check with your guests. Maybe you might want to move the time to what works best for everyone. And then you want to send the invitations. That's about a month in advance. Let everyone know, hey, this is what's happening. I would love for you to come. So then let's move closer to two to three weeks in advance. Um, think about your decorations. What are you going for? Are you going for more of an elegant dinner or a casual dinner? What type of event do you want to have? And so then you can know what kind of dishes do I need? Do I what sort of tablecloth? Do I need decorations? I try to use the things that I have on hand, but if I need to purchase something, I want to be able to find the most cost-effective option, and so I need to look for that in advance. So you want to check out what kind of decorations you're wanting to do. The next thing is the meal plan. What kind of menu are you going to have? Go ahead and think, and where are you going to purchase the items for that menu? For this dinner party, I did it with my sister. We were still at my house, but she was part of that, and so we sat down, scheduled the menu out, and then also determined who was doing what. Obviously, in any of these situations, if you can do a party like this with someone else, you can sort of divide up the work. That makes it so fun and so much easier on you. And then third, you wanna create that detailed shopping list. Look at your menu plan, know where you're purchasing, what you need. If you have an item that may be harder to get, you may wanna go ahead and get that. Go ahead and purchase some of the things that are um, not gonna go bad, non-perishable things, and then you know what you need to purchase a few days in advance. I'm gonna share with you our menu plan for the party that we hosted. For dinner, we had filet. Uh, skipping forward for an appetizer, we had fig and grapefruit salad. And for dinner, we had filet with a gorgonzola butter on top of the filet. We had Hasselback potatoes, we had balsamic, Brussels sprouts with bacon, and then we had Brazilian cheese bites for our bread option. We went with a gluten-free menu. For dessert, we had a flourless chocolate torte, and then we had one of our guests that my mother doesn't have, she can't eat chocolate. And so I wanted to be sure to have another option for her. So we had an almond cookie with the mascarpone parfait. Look at the menu and think about dietary restrictions. Do you have someone who is gluten intolerant? Do you have someone who can't have certain things? That's really, really important when you're planning a menu out. I knew that I could get the majority of these items at Costco, but let me give you a few menu tips. When I was playing the menu, I knew that for one of the sides, I only wanted there to be one side that I was actually preparing during, like right before the dinner party, something that was on the, the stove. So the Brussels sprouts, those need to be cooked right before I serve them. Now the Hasselback potatoes, I can actually wash them, chop them at the top, soak them in water, and then prepare them and put them in the oven one hour before. So I was able to have that area of the kitchen completely cleaned up. I wanted to do as much in advance as I could in order to have my kitchen as easy to keep clean. So that's something to think about. Don't choose three sides that all have to be prepared on the stove at the same time. To me, that's stressful and that seems to be a lot of mess. During the week of the party, you wanna confirm with all of your dinner guests. We're all busy, someone could forget, but confirm that so you know exactly who is coming. And then you also wanna plan your shopping days. 
my party was on Friday night. And so on Wednesday, I made sure to go and get all of the ingredients that I needed. Because sure enough, Costco always has Brussels sprouts and they happen to be out of Brussels sprouts. So Thursday, I needed to make a run to another grocery store to pick up Brussels sprouts. So be sure to allow yourself some margin there between the day you need to shop and the day of the party so that you can grab those last minute things that the store may be out of. And then one of the biggest things is cleaning your home. You want to have your home as tidy as possible, but at the same time, you're in the middle of preparing for a party. So that day I was still working, which I work on my computer and my kids were home. My daughter hadn't started school yet. And so I made a plan for that day. I did my regular weekly cleaning. So Mondays are the bathroom, Tuesdays I cleaned the upstairs, and then Wednesdays I cleaned the downstairs floors. So the house was clean, but on that Friday morning, I made sure the upstairs was completely clean because you never know who's gonna go upstairs or if someone needs to use that. We only have one half bath downstairs, one to allow the restroom upstairs to be available for them. So I made sure that by noon that day, the upstairs was completely clean. I let the kids know, okay, upstairs is off limits. We're gonna stay down here for the rest of the afternoon. And then I did all of my kitchen prep work. So I dirtied up the kitchen, I made a mess, and here's a big, big tip. I went ahead and started the dishwasher. It already was close to being full. I went ahead and started it. So that way I would be able, it, it's like a two hour cycle. It could run its cycle. I could put everything away and start the dinner party with a clean dishwasher. To me, that's a really big deal because I wanna start with a clean dishwasher. That way I'm able to instantly put everything that we use. And when we clean the, clear the table from the dishes from our guests, we can immediately put those in the dishwasher. So big tip start your dinner party with a clean dishwasher. But I did all my prep work in the kitchen and then I cleaned up as much as I could in the kitchen and then just did a quick sweep through the downstairs. Now, thankfully, we were able to have a babysitter for our little girls. My 15 year old stayed and helped me with the party, but my sister's daughters and my daughter went to stay at someone else's house. So that was very helpful. So around five o'clock, we took them there. But I made sure that around four o'clock that everything was tidy um, I chose this time of day to be media time for my daughter so she could sit there with the iPad with a snack and not make a lot of a mess. And so as you can see, it's not like I'm rushing at the last minute to get my house clean for this dinner party. I was preparing all throughout the day, really all throughout the week to, to do this that evening. At around five o'clock is when the guests started to arrive and my parents were so surprised. It was so much fun and I found myself really enjoying myself, which unfortunately, a lot of times at events like this, I've found that I don't enjoy myself that much because I feel, oh no, I forgot this or I'm rushed for this. But thankfully, because I planned so far in advance and I began to think of these things a month in advance and just made, of course, using my planner to make lists and to check those lists, check them twice, make sure that I hadn't forgotten anything. This dinner party was so much fun. It was so smooth. And because I had cleaned up throughout, there really wasn't much to do at the end. I was able to clean up and go to bed pretty quickly when it was over. And it was a wonderful, wonderful time. So I know that many of you would love to have people over to your home for a dinner party, invite some friends, invite your family. The holidays are coming up. These things can help you to prepare for that. But sometimes it's overwhelming. It's a little bit scary. But I know that you can do it with just a little bit, little bit of planning. You can have a dinner party that is stress-free that you get to enjoy even as the host. I hope these tips have helped you. I know they will help you to find margin in your life for the good things.